Okay, so we're back here outside the uh, this cave where we need to um, get some stuff done. I, I get a bit annoyed by these uh, by these timed sequences where you just kind of have to um, do something quickly before something bad happens. It's kind of like when we were trying to get through that door into the Sharky's treasure room. It's kind of the same thing. You have to be quick, and it's not always clear what you have to do. So I find I find it just a bit annoying. But let's um, let's go ahead and try this again. So I'll I'll have to be quick before the enchanter shows up. And somebody mentioned I need to take a closer look at the desk, and yeah. You approach the workbench for a closer look. You can get a close-up like this. So it's kind of like King's Quest Three, where you can start casting spells and stuff. These elaborate candlesticks are quite expensive looking. A clear beaker. It is useful for mixing various fluids, chemicals, and minerals together. When lit, this device heats the beaker and any contents that it contains. A wick leads into the base, which is made of flint stone. I feel like singing the Flintstones song, but I won't. So yeah, so here we have the, the book, book, and we uh, we read the first. we read this already. So let's just go over this again. So it is kind of like the spells in King's Quest Three, except I guess a bit simpler. So first, as I mentioned, you need a blue mineral and a yellow vegetable. We have the yellow flower, and then we we have the white feather. Now I did say, what can we use as a blue mineral? Some people said uh, gems are generally minerals, so I should be able to use the gems. Um, and yes, as it turns out, you can use either the brooch or the earrings. Either will work because they both have blue gems. But what you're supposed to do, apparently, is pry the gem out of your sword instead. This is the sword of the first king of Daventry. It dates back almost 1,000 years and has been passed down from king to king since that time. Try not to damage it. A magnificent clear crystal is embedded within its hilt. So apparently you're supposed to use the the crystal that's that's in the hilt of the sword. Um, I guess this is kind of like you know in King's Quest One. Remember you're supposed to avoid using the treasures. You're supposed to hold on to the treasures. So it's kind of the same idea here. You can use these treasures, but you should try to avoid using them if you can. So let's get this crystal out of the sword. You feel the weight of your ancient um, weapon. It's amazingly light and cool to the touch. I think uh, I need to use something. Can I can I use this fence picket to get it out? You managed to dislodge the crystal that had been set within the hilt of the sword almost a millennium ago. You feel a tinge of guilt and wonder what all the past monarchs of Daventry would say if they saw you damaging ancient crown property. Oh, what a shame. But apparently you're supposed to do it like this. The stunning clear stone used to belong to your ancient sword. It is cool and smooth with sharp edges. Okay, so anyway, yeah, so apparently we're supposed to toss this into the beaker. It's not time to add the crystal yet. Wait, what? Hold on, what? Um. Do I put the flower in first? You toss the sickly yellow flower into the beaker. Okay, and now do I put the crystal in? It's not time. Uh, no? Hold on, let me check. Yes, I'm, I'm using a walkthrough because I really just can't be bothered to, to figure this stuff out anymore. I'm just kind of... Kind of, uh... Oh, the walkthrough that I'm using says to put the earrings in the flask. So I guess I do have to use the earrings after all. For some reason, I thought that I could use the, um the uh the crystal but i guess i must have misunderstood that okay let's go ahead and and do that then yeah let's toss the uh, i guess it doesn't really matter do you put the earrings in or the brooch in you can use either one all right let's go ahead and toss you toss the earrings into the beaker okay and then uh we need to light that flint stone underneath i think we used the sword for that right you strike the blade of your sword against the flint stone it sparks and the wick catches a light you watch, fascinated, as the two unlikely objects melt under the heat of the magical flame. Okay, now we have this green liquid. The contents of the beaker have melted into a thick greenish liquid. And didn't we need to, uh, the yeah, coagulate into a greenish liquid, stir the mixture with a white feather, drop into this a perfectly clear crystal. Okay, I see, so that's where the crystal comes in, duh. Okay, so we stir it with the uh, the white... F wait, where's the white feather? Here, uh, yeah, here it is. 
You stir the mixture carefully with a white feather. It soon dissolves in the hot liquid. Okay, and now we put in that clear crystal that we got from the sword. You drop the crystal in and watch, amazed, as the green liquid slowly seeps into it. Okay, and then... The f okay, and now we need to recite this. Hopefully we don't need to type it in. Hopefully we don't need to type in that whole thing as we did in King's Quest 3. Do I just talk to it like this? Heed now these words. Crystal. Perfect. Green is thy hue. Restore. Correct. Guard well my form. Preserve. Protect. You recite the words correctly, line for line, and sure enough, only a brilliant emerald remains in the glass beaker. You quickly blow the flame out so as not to overheat the emerald and cause damage to it. Okay. The beaker now holds a magnificent green emerald. Picking it up gingerly, you're amazed that the emerald took virtually no time at all to cool. Okay, let's go ahead and save here. I got the emerald. Okay, now the question is, what do I do with it? Your crystal has become a dazzling emerald. You sense magic in its refracted light. It is cool and smooth with sharp edges. Despite what some say about your good fortune, you are not enchanted. Okay, so I guess what I'm supposed to do is... I'm not sure how I'm supposed to know this. Wait, what did the book say about the... <laughs> Let me check again. What did the book actually say about the... Uh... You have no remaining interest in the old book. That's nice. I'd like to know what the book actually said. Hold on, let me quickly restore. Let me go back here and restore. Because I, I just want to read again what the book said about afterward. You, f the f you will now have the means to safeguard yourself should your enchantments ever get out of hand. Oh, I see. Okay, I get it. Right, okay. So... The, uh, the snake is enchanted, so I guess we want to undo the enchantment on the snake, so we use the emerald on the snake. As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Before you now stands a magnificent winged horse. Thank you for freeing me. A horrid enchanter transformed me into that legless thing after I refused to be his steed. Um... I, I'm going to, first of all... First of all, I'm going to ask everyone to please refrain from posting 5 trillion Mr. Ed jokes on this video. Uh, secondly, why does the horse's voice echo like he's in... Like, like his voice is echoing through a sequence of caves. I mean, we're out in the open. I don't think there's much here for the horse's voice to echo off. Or does it echo off his... Echo off his internal organs in such a way that his voice comes out all echoey like that. All right, I don't know. Anyway, um... This is a handsome white steed. It has beautiful wings with delicate feathers. The horse may not want a rider on its back. Well, again, maybe maybe the horse would just like me to pet him. Maybe I just wanted to pet the horse and not get on him. I, I know I keep harping about the parser thing. It just bugs me. And, and some people have mentioned, um, you know, a bad parser is is also a bad thing. If the parser doesn't recognize normal words, if the parser doesn't recognize the words that you would expect a person to use, then a parser may be worse than the, the point-and-click interface because you're trying to type reasonable things into the parser and it doesn't understand. And yeah, yeah, I, I get that. I mean, a bad parser is a bad thing, obviously, but a properly written parser will just let you do so many more things than, than this point-and-click interface. That was quite a gamble, to refuse an enchanter. True, but I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. For I am a disciple of the cloud, and can serve no land dweller. Disciple of the cloud? What does that mean? First, tell me of what you seek up here. You take a deep breath, then explain about the door of destiny, the gems of nature, and your present quest to locate the growth gem. So, you seek the air gem. 
Yes, that is right. You know of it? Most certainly. But you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. I would gladly take you to it, but alas, the Enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the Cloud Spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. Why does a horse have a, a lisp? He, he really talks like... like some 80-year-old man with no teeth, and he just can't pronounce a letter S at all. Um... What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you seek. It passes through us as we grow, all through our lives, though few are ever aware of it. You will know soon enough when I take you to it. That, that, that horse's voice is wonderful. That, that's, I think that's definitely in so bad it's good territory. Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. Some are predestined, others are determined by choice. I believe yours to be of the latter. All of us have a destiny. That's that's wonderful. I love that horse's voice. It's 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 so terrible that it's wonderful. You don't have anything else to say to the steed. Okay. All right. Let's let's go. So he said we can find a clue in the in in this Blagart's cave. Let's let's go ahead and save here again. Uh, talk to horse. And save the game and see if we can find a clue here. So, uh, what are we supposed to do here? Um, is there? You notice that some writing has been engraved into the wall. I think that wasn't there before. You read the inscription. In row of stones that number six, half in a pair from left do pick. Quell then my spell, avoid the tricks. Um,. So in so I guess six stones in a row in a row of stones to number six. So six stones in a row, half and a pair from left do pick. Uh, half and a pair from left. Okay. Uh, I'll try to remember that. The engraving on the wall reads. Oh, really? In row of stones that number six. Half and a pair from left do pick. Quell then my spell. Avoid the tricks. That's that's good that you mentioned that because otherwise I wouldn't have noticed that. Thanks for pointing that out there, sir. Um, so you hear footsteps approaching. Yeah. So apparently I'm supposed to just wait here until this guy shows up now. Uh oh. The enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. You feel a tingling sensation all over your body as the enchantment attempts to transform you into whatever the enchanter has fancied. At the same time, you also feel the comforting energy of the emerald shielding you. The enchanter's twisted smile turns downwards. He scowls at you. There is a look of panic on the man's face. He does not dare breathe. I hereby order you to depart from Kalima forever, never to trouble its citizens again, lest you earn the fullness of my wrath. The Enchanter looks baffled. You sigh inwardly and try again. Leave. If you come back, then you will get it. The Enchanter nods frantically, as much as he can without cutting his own neck on your sword edge. He gestures quickly with his hands. Okay. Wow, he took his whole uh, his whole set of equipment with him as well. That's not uh, not bad. Um, is there anything else here that I can use? You are standing in an empty cave. You walk close. Okay. Well, we can read the engraving once you more, read. but okay. But the it's... engraving. 
but it's the same as before. So, okay, I guess that was that. And I don't feel bad for using a walkthrough about that because I really, I, I wouldn't have been able to figure that out in any reasonable length of time without, without a walkthrough, I think. So, um, um, so wait, we can't. You could mount the horse, but it would not be able to find the cloud spirit without its bridle. Okay, so we need the bridle. Um, um, what now? Um, it's not much else here for me to do anything with except the horse. Can I use the, uh, I guess I need to use the magic carpet again to fly somewhere else? You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet rises into the air again. Once again, I, I very much enjoy Graham's... The carpet begins to descend. Graham's very interpretive presentation of sitting. Okay, we're back here. Um, what do we do here now? Uh, hold on. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look at the walkthrough, man. I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what I, I really wouldn't know what I would be doing if I if I didn't have the walkthrough. I'm sorry. I, I started off playing this game blind, but I don't think that's gonna work out very well from here because um, I really have no idea. So if I I'm here and then six spherical stones lie at the base of the huge rock mound. Oh, I get it. This is the this is the inscription. So six stones in a row. There is an enormous rock mound nearby. Vines and creepers run down it and twist through the cracks and crevices. Beneath the mound are some smaller stones. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, I get it. And it said half and a pair from the left, right? So. If there are six stones, then obviously half of them are three, and a pair is two. So half and a pair means three plus two, which is five. So I should use the fifth stone? You try to lift the stone, but it will not budge. Oh, I have to use the, uh, the crystal on it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and use the... Uh, oh, I don't have the crystal anymore. Uh, I guess I used the emerald on it. You bend over and hold the emerald above the stone so that the sun's light channels through it. Incredible. The rock has transformed into a silver studded bridle. That's pretty impressive. You see a leather bridle with silver rivets lying between the rocks. You take the bridle. Okay. The leather bridle is studded with silver rivets and a silver bit. You put the bridle over your head. Nothing happens. Don't you feel silly? Actually, no, I don't, because that's exactly what I was hoping he would do, in fact. You put the bridle okay. over your... No, that's actually, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Graham put a bridle on himself. I'm actually, I'm actually very happy about that. All right, so let's go ahead and save here. Uh, I'm just curious, what happens if I... What happens if I use the, the emerald on the wrong rock? Do, do I die, or do I just... Do I just somehow, uh, does it just not work? Let's, let's see. Let's click. It would be too dangerous to use the magic carpet near those jagged rocks. Okay, well, fine. Let's go ahead and use it out here then. You Apparently Graham the can't, carpet. Graham can't sit down in such a small space. He's too, too huge to sit in, in like a giant opening that's like 10 times wider than okay anyway uh so let's try this i'm just curious if i use the emerald on just some some other random stone does does it just not work or you bend over and wow that's the danger in getting stoned wow that okay oh wait can't do it here wait can i can i still do it after uh, after getting the bridle can i use, try using the emerald some more you bend yes, over I can. and hold the emerald okay that's the danger in getting they all do the same thing okay um nice so i have the bridle can i go ahead and use the uh the carpet again to get back to the horse there's not enough room can i do it here or do i have to go to another screen there's not come on man really 
Seriously, how much how much room do you need to use that carpet? It's not like a helicopter. You want okay. Okay, so we're back here, so we can freely As go back. Reach down to get the carpet. It vanishes into thin air without even so much as a puff of smoke. Wow. Okay. I guess that means I can't go back. At least not with the carpet, since I don't have it anymore. Um, okay, so we have the bridle. I guess it makes sense to use the bridle on the horse now. You slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Come, Come climb, climb up on my back. Okay. Hold on. This will be a little accelerating. Oh, boy. Fade to white. The disciple of the cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. You grip the reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. And find yourself standing on a cloud. How is it possible that I can stand upon thin air? Such are not the questions you should be asking. You have come for the Air Gem, or the Growth Gem, as it was once named by the Ancients. It has not been termed thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. Meaning, no disrespect. Uh... Mm. Cloud Spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown, thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The cloud spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. It must be proven that you have also grown in both mind and soul. So on these shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of king are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the growth gem. After a moment of silence, the cloud spirit intones... Behold your first test. I, I can I can think of many quite uh, quite suggestive things the to say about. The around you clears, and you find yourself in a familiar place. This is Daventry, and furthermore, you are a child again. A slight dizziness overwhelms you for an instant. How strange! You no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind, though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look, it is Malvolio, your best friend. The two of you are deeply engrossed in a game of bat and ball. Yes, because you can just catch the ball like that with your hand when it's... King Edward? You there. Y yes Yes? Is that how you address your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir. I mean, sire. Which of you two boys threw that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? Wouldn't your crown protect you there, sir? Okay, um... I kind of feel like if 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 he actually got hit in the head, 
with a baseball, he would probably get knocked out. Well, maybe, maybe that's why he didn't, because he, he's wearing the crown. Maybe he just bounced off his crown, but anyway. I was also, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know why Graham is so so amazed at being able to walk on clouds, because obviously King's Quest One was not that long ago, and we did also walk on clouds there, so I don't know, maybe Graham's beginning to lose his memory. Who knows? Anyway, um, I guess we'll... <laughs> Let's do these tests another time. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Thanks for watching, everyone. We, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I, uh, that I was not able to do those puzzles without a walkthrough, but I mean, I, I really have, I mean, like I said, I, I would really not have figured that out, so I hope that I didn't spoil everything for everyone here, but, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and call the video for now, and I will talk to you folks next time. Ta-ta, everyone.